Hey guys, do you see this wonderful rally going on on Bitcoin punching through 30,000? Wow, such a huge milestone. I haven't seen Bitcoin up this high in about 10 months. So, but I'm also equally psyched up about seeing the price movement going on for Caspa. Caspa has been really going pretty viral and it's been getting a lot of adoption. It has a market cap of almost 650 million and its price has gone up about 850% so far since January 1st. But what has me really excited is, is it's a great opportunity for me to turn on all my mining rigs. Finally, since Ethereum went proof of stake, I've been looking and hunting for different mining opportunities, different coins, and Casper seems to be the one that's been emerging and it seems to be staying that way. Recently, we've seen Casper get added to the Zelcor wallet some new mining pools coming out with it. Two miners recently added it. I'm really hoping that it turns out to be the next great coin to mine. Not financial advice. Do your own research on this. Before I begin today's video, I want to take a moment to say thank you so much to my subscribers. You subscribing really means a lot to me. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Crypto Mining Insider. I'm an IT professional by day, and I run a crypto mining farm at home 24 hours a day. I'm always looking for new and creative opportunities to get higher profits out of my mining rigs. And hopefully what I'm going to demonstrate will help you today. So if you enjoy this video and it helps you, please remember to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my best overclock settings for mining Caspa on my RTX 3000 series GPUs. I'm going to demonstrate how I set up and configure the overclocks in NiceHash, in Windows, and on Hive OS. Casper uses the K-heavy hash algorithm, which is very different from any other algorithm I've ever had to mine before. It's extremely lightweight on the memory core clock, so low I'm going to dial it all the way down to the card's limit. I'm going to be applying a locked core clock and a positive core clock offset. This is going to have the effect of undervolting the card, bringing the wattage even lower and that's one of the things that's most attractive about the K-Heavy Hash algorithm. It's extremely lightweight and efficient as far as the GPUs. It doesn't generate nearly as much heat or consume nearly as much wattage. I'm going to be presenting two overclock settings for each GPU to you. One is going to be my optimal, which is the higher hash rate, still at a very high efficiency. And the next is going to be the absolute most efficient values that I was getting out of the GPU. A final point I want to remind everyone is to always mine safely if you're going to mine. Make sure your wires and all your power supplies can handle everything at max load. Even though I'm going to be sharing overclocks that I use to get optimal results and even great efficiency out of it, can't always count on the operating system or the miner making sure that that happens. In the event your cards lose that overclock settings, they may start running at full throttle. You may have thought that, hey, I dialed my 3070 down to only using 70 or 80 watts, but if it loses the overclock, it could easily go up to 220 or 230 watts, depending upon your miner. So always make sure you have the correct hardware, safe wiring, and that you mine safely. For your convenience, I'm going to be putting chapter indexes down below so you can skip ahead or come back to areas that you find most useful. Let me give you a preview of my test mining rig. Here's a quick overview of my mining farm and there's my test rig. My test rig has seven RTX 3000 series cards. So there's a 3060, that's an MSI Gaming X Trio. Look at how thick it is. Then there's an EVGA 3060 Ti. That's a further win, but no RGB on it. There's an EVGA XC3 3070, followed by another EVGA XC3 3070 Ti, and then an EVGA XC3 3080. So they're all your standard EVGA cards. And then I have an EVGA Further Wind 3080 Ti. And for the first time, I actually put my Further Wind 3090 on the outside. And that's my test rig. I've actually been doing a lot of work on it. I have a broken fan I gotta fix there, but. I'll fix that soon enough, and then that's all running on an ASRock H110 Pro motherboard with an EVGA power supply and an HP 1200 watt servo power supply in the front. And this rig is running great, and that's what I'm going to be using for all my testing today. Setting up your overclock settings in NiceHash is pretty straightforward once you've done it, but let me walk you through it. So I already have my nice hash started, but if you didn't, 
Rather than double clicking to start it, you're going to want to right click on it and select Run as Administrator. This will tell Windows to start NiceHash with elevated permissions, giving it the ability to apply overclock settings. When NiceHash is open, go to your plugin settings and make sure that the miner is installed that you want. In my case, it's LOL miner and it's already installed, so I'm all set. Then I just want to go to my extra parameters. In extra parameters, you're going to see a list of the different miners, and then you can click down the down arrow and see the list of different algorithms that are supported. In my case, I'm interested in K-heavy hash, which is used for Casper mining. And you can see I've already applied the overclock settings right here. Now I'm going to be showing you for different overclocks for different cards. This is specific for the 3060 Ti, which I have in my computer. But if you had a different card, maybe a 3070 or a 3080, you'd put in specific settings for them. And I'm going to be showing you a little bit more of the breakdown of what that setting is there. I just wanted to show you where to apply it. Now once that's set up and applied, you just go to the dashboard and you click on the Start Miner. If you wanted to mine Caspa using a Windows batch file, you would just download one of the latest Caspa miners, like the LOL version 1.72 from their GitHub site. And once you've downloaded and unzipped that file, if you open it up, you'll see there's a bunch of sample template files. And these are great ways to start off on mining. And there's even one in here called mine underscore cas underscore with OC. So if you open up and edit this file, it's really a template file for you to get jump started to be able to mine Caspa really quickly. So you'd be replacing it with the pool you want. They're currently set up to use Heroes Miners, and they're using their own wallet. So you're going to want to replace this with the name of your wallet and worker. And then there's three extra parameters here. These are actually used for the overclocking. So there's a sample here for a locked core clock. It's giving you a value, uh, locked memory, and a core clock offset. And you would be adjusting that for values that are specific for your GPU. Once you have that set up, the mining pool setup in your wallet, you should be all set to go. You should just be able to right click and just run as administrator to start mining with this batch file in Windows. In Hive OS, I'm going to be specifying my overclock settings differently than I typically would. So I would specify my mining rig, like my Founders Edition 3070. This is eight RTX 3070 Founders Edition cards. They're identical cards. And this mining rig is running great. These are my most efficient overclocks, not my optimal, which I'll be getting to in a little bit. Now, typically in Hive OS, I would be coming in here and I would be able to set my core clock offset, my memory clock offset, my power limit, etc. However, Hive OS does not allow me to specify memory clocks and other values that are so low. So I'm going to actually have to do it through the flight sheet. And to do that, I would just be specifying the flight sheet that I'm going to be using for this rig. You can see I can just come in here and edit it. And under the setup minor config, scroll down, you can see the extra config arguments. And right here is where I'd be passing in my overclock statements. Now, I have a rig full of eight RTX 3070s. They're identical cards. So therefore, I only have to specify the overclocks once. If I had different cards, I'd be specifying them in comma value. So I'd have like comma 1410, comma another value, comma another value, depending upon the different GPUs I'd have. I'd have a different overclock setting specifically for each one of them. Another important factor I want to show you while we're looking at this rig is, is that although they're all using the same exact overclock, notice even just from here, the wattage is a little bit different. We see 63, 61, 64, and some are down to like 58. So different cards will kind of be a little bit of silicone lottery and a little bit more power efficient. So you have to be expecting that there will be some variability amongst cards, even if they're identical. To get the best overclocks for all seven of my GPUs, I've conducted hundreds of tests that took many hours. Let me begin by giving you a preview of my most efficient mining session. These are my seven GPUs running at their highest efficiency. And these are my optimal mining results, giving me the higher hash rate, with still a very, very high efficiency number. Look at even cards like the 3080 Ti and the 3090, they're punching through that one giga hash boundary. Let's get into our testing. Starting off my tests with the RTX 3060. This is the MSI Gaming X Trio. It's really a thick, beefy card. It looks more like a 3080 if you ask me. And this card gave me really great results considering its size. I guess don't let it fool you, but uh, using an optimal overclock settings as well as your efficient what's shown above, you see, I was able to get 333 mega hash out of this card, still maintaining a 6.61 efficiency. 
The next card I tested was my RTX 3060 Ti. This is actually a newcomer. It's the Further Wind card, although it looks like an XE3. It's actually a Further Wind, but it doesn't have the RGB lighting of the Further Wind card. But this card performed fantastic on my efficiency overclock settings. I was getting efficiency of over 8.21, but on my optimal, which is where I'm running at, it's 473 mega hash using 64.1 watts, giving me a 7.33 efficiency. The next card I tested is my RTX 3070. This is another XC3 card. And this card gave me 582 mega hash using only 80 watts, giving me a 7.2 overall efficiency. The next card I tested is my RTX 3070 Ti, another XC3 card. And this gave me 619 mega hash using a 6.77 efficiency. And I was really impressed overall with this card because 619 mega hash using only 91 watts. It was really close actually to the 3070 and it actually outperformed the 3080 if you ask me. Next card I'm going to be looking at is the RTX 3080. This gave me 851 mega hash at 6.3 efficiency. This card, although it's very powerful and it does great for things like Ethereum, I think the efficiency of this card is definitely lackluster, for lack of better words. And it performs really well, but it doesn't have as strong of efficiency as the other cards. The next card I tested was my RTX 3080 Ti. This is the further wind card with the beautiful RGB lighting on it. And I was surprised because the optimal overclocks, as well as the efficient one, were very, very close on the upper end of the range, as you can see on the graph. If you look at the red bar across the mega hash to efficiency chart right there, you could see it's running up pretty high. 1,620 was the efficient, and 1,650 was the overall optimal. But this card punched through over the one giga hash boundary, one giga, 1.1 giga hash at 7.2 efficiency, which was fantastic. The last card I tested is my 3090 further wind card. And this card also did great, and it was also on the higher end that it performed really well. I was able to get 7.23 efficiency out of the most efficient overclock, and 6.84 using the highest, but that's giving me over 1,034 mega hash. So overall, I'm really happy with the mining results of all these cards. I really think that I've dialed in and tuned in. And I think by you seeing the range of what's between the most efficient and the optimal, hopefully it'll give you some guidance to getting the best performance out of your cards. Now that I've shown you all my test results of my RTX 30 series cards, I thought it would be great to put the graphs together side by side so you could see how they all behave very differently. And the consumption of wattage at different hash rates is very, very different too. So some cards like the 3060, you could see it's high in the back. It drops down a little bit, but it comes up again. And this would be my more optimal overclock setting. Now 3060 Ti, the 3070, and the 3070 Ti, they both run really, really well. And then all of a sudden they slowly taper off. The 3080 is more like a camel. It kind of humps up in the middle here. And that's really the optimal hash rate you'll be getting as well as efficiency. The 3080 Ti, this card actually surprised me because the higher end of the clock is actually where it did its better performance in the optimization as well as the efficiency range. The 3090 was no slouch either and it also punched through that one giga hash boundary. And also I'm getting the higher end of the card was giving me the optimal results on it as well as the best overall hash rate. But I think by you seeing this, hopefully it helps you get a better visual that how your cards behave and it's not linear. So although you will see as you applying more core clock to it, you will see it gradually improve. The amount of water it's using is not linear by any means. That about wraps it up for me today. And this has been a long video. And if you watched this far, I really appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. I've been working really hard, honestly, on this video, probably for about two weeks to try to get all these overclock settings dialed in and make sure they're refined, testing them out between Nice Hash Windows and Hive OS. And please drop a comment down below if it helps you. I'd really love to know. And if you have any suggestions on ways I can improve this, I'd love to know as well. And if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give me that thumbs up like, and don't forget to press down on that subscribe button. You subscribe and it's what really means the world to me. So until next time, stay safe. I'll see you on the next video.